welcome back. Uh, let's play in the Supernova Season 7. Uh, there are many, many, many players this time around in the tournament, so there will be many games to get played. And hopefully opponents will be eager to uh, get them played. So while I'm queuing up for a game, let's go watch. Oh, and let's make sure I have the board size set up correctly. There we go. So, yeah, I'm just astounded. We have somewhere around 60 players. Last time we had around 40 of whom about 10 dropped. I'm thinking that with this many active players, um, I'm guessing we're still going to have about 10 drop, but that still leaves like 50 games to get played within the span of just over a month. So, lots of early morning shogi. Um, Oh, let me also open the game invitations. That way, in case um, players, uh, in case somehow I'm just observing a game, and somehow a player is challenging me to play in the Supernova, we can get that done too. Well, we're still queuing for a game. Uh, it's interesting to me, because last time we had the Supernova, if I queued for a game early in the morning, which is, for me, early morning for Japan evening, um, it wasn't too hard to get a game most of the time. <laughs> Some opponents would even schedule games in advance. Right here we go. Good luck. Switch into emotes only mode. Our opponent seems well prepared for this game. <laughs> okay. Interesting.
Well, this potentially sets up a fork. Um... I confess at least some ignorance here that um, I don't play this opening all the time. I'm not entirely sure what my opponent plans here. We're going to reinforce this pawn back here. I'm confused. I don't understand edge file tactics as well as I want to. Um, What happens if I do try to break on this file? 
push takes, lance takes, pawn drop, and lance head. Lance takes, lance takes, pawn drop, and they drop something in my territory, and I take. It just seems so unwise for me to try to do that. All right, now I've been looking at this before, so now I've successfully blocked their bishop. Um, if I push here, they take my silver, I promote. I don't see the problem. Oh, the problem is this damn fork back here. I take their gold, they take my rook, I take their gold. It's just ill-timed on my part. Um, I still want to do this. This does not make sense. Oh, okay, so they have another fork that I missed. Um, I think that's fine, though. This is, like, way more complicated than my opponent thinks it is. I'm trying to find what's a reasonable way to respond to this.
Is this checkmate? I did not see a checkmate here. Didn't even cross my mind that there might be a mate in this position. It should have crossed my mind, because this position is so scary, but also that's not necessarily the same thing as checkmate. I think what they read out is that I couldn't push on the second or fourth files without getting mated. Um, I think they missed this move. And unfortunately, their bishop is not attacking right now. Well, there it is, right on schedule. But what's this going to do? Uh, So we're going to defend against both drops next to the king, and also threaten king takes token. Okay. I'm still in denial about being under attack. There's only so much denial I can go through, though, isn't there?
I'm tempted to move um, this knight to give my king somewhere to run to if they take it. Okay, I have only one legal move here. No, I have two, but one of them immediately gets me mated, so we're picking the other move. Yeah, I was concerned about this pawn drop. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, this knight does cover the square. Which could possibly lead me to get mated. Uh, now this actually could surround my king. I did thankfully take out the gold that was probably going to checkmate me, but... Um, 
yeah, this is extremely dangerous. Um, on the other hand, which piece is going to deliver the mate? Is my king just going to mow down all the pawns across this rank? Is that what's going on now? I was so fixated on trying to checkmate that I forgot for a moment that this knight actually surrounds my king. Um, or at least forces me to move toward the opponent. But I think at this point they've got nothing better than promoting um, their bishop. And this gives me time to checkmate. Also, possibly the way I checkmate is by king takes pawn, and then Tokin takes gold. But that's a bit flashy, and um, I don't like it. I'm trying to read out if I take the gold first. Yeah, surely I've got to surround the king somehow. Actually, token back here um, might be a better surrounding move than anything else. Although then they can put a knight in the way, and I don't have a gold support. Well, the token would support an attack, but let's see, token silver, gold, gold. Yeah, if this bishop's not here. Hmm. Oh, then the king, king here. But somewhere in this combination, I can take here, but then this knight interposes with check. It's a mess. So yeah, I think I need this token as close as possible. My whole plan has been silver 4-3, but I've just never had a tempo to do it. Alright. Um, is silver 4-3 still the plan? Is it better that I take this pawn first? <laughs> It's risky. Oh, especially because this bishop checks me and I don't have a good inner position. Um,
Oh, I missed this. Um, thankfully, I have an armada of pieces to deliver, mate. Good game. That was an adventure, for sure. Um, all right, we'll see to what extent they're interested in post-game commentary. That was... And yeah, my king survived for the longest time. I am curious exactly what transpired here. Hmm. Okay, so he can take this. Um... Trying to work through... I mean, during the game, obviously, I was in Bioyomi the whole time, so I'm not totally confident what I would do. Capturing seems to make sense. Okay... Yeah, that's scary because they threatened to take my knight. Um, perhaps we play this anyway? So they keep threatening this lance drop on my king's head, so that's why I have to keep putting pieces other than my king on this 2-5 square. Um, yeah, it's complicated. Uh, explore the game. All right, cool. Um, cool. Wow. What a way to kick off the tournament. That was an extraordinary adventure. Um, I don't think either of us could have predicted this game. Um, so, yeah, just to recap, let's get the large board out. Um, so, I don't play Central Foul Rook every game. Apparently, I must have played enough moves correctly that my opponent knew how to respond. Um, I've done this before. Uh, I'm not sure if this is mistimed or not. Okay, we have another comment. Let me see what our comment is. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed this game. It was super complicated. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm not the only one to have thought this game was just bananas. Um, possibly this is a very, very, very mistimed pawn push, but... I mean, what else do I do? I spent some minutes thinking about, like, trying to open this ninth file and realized, well, that's really not in the spirit of this position. Um, but I played this pawn push anyway. Um, this, my opponent immediately blitzed out. I wasn't so sure it was the right thing to do. Oh, that's right. Um... So yeah, move ordering wise, I probably should have played this, because perhaps, um, perhaps I could have provoked a response like this followed by that, um, or perhaps I could have just provoked this outright. Here they do have this point adequately covered, but yeah, supposing this were there, um. Yeah, we could have had this entire variation, but this time there's no silver fork on this back row. So this, I think, would have been a huge improvement for me. Um, so I should have just gone for this directly. That all said, um, yeah, a lot of this is mistimed. So I'm wondering... 
one idea is this, another idea is that, but they need to have some way of defending against my silver attacks. Um, like, if they can lock the silver in place, then I don't get to push on the center file so easily. I know I had lifted the gold to deal with the rook breaking in, but um, maybe lifting the gold at least to here was just wrong? I'm not sure. But it means that if he gets a silver, I get forked. And, um, yeah, somehow we got this. I got a rook. Um, yeah, engines will be disputing this for a long time. We have another comment. Let me see what the comment is. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. So we do the live stream, and then during the games, we accept comments in the chat window um, for the stream. Oh, why push the edge pawn? Push the fit. See, this is the practical advice I need. Because <laughs> I don't play this opening all the time, although I've studied it enough. Um, yeah, okay. So. Um. Like, is this a circumstance where I'd want to push this? Or do I want to have my silver up there first? Also, welcome. Like, I spent some time studying this, but I need to spend more time, like, having a really not superficial analysis here. All right, so... Silver 4-5. Silver 3-3. Three, three, and now pawn 5-4. Okay. So this is how this typically would go. Um, and perhaps this could happen to move earlier even, like the pawn 1-6 might have been unnecessary on my part. Um, we could still do this directly. Yeah, I like this. Not sure why I didn't do that. It makes sense. Because, like, this threat is super strong, especially since they moved the silver up. If they just left it on 4 2 and let their position, uh, let this pawn drop, really, um, that would be sad for them. But I guess my concern, and I don't know how legitimate this is, is like, say I play this up and they do knight 3 3. I guess I just take the pawn and be happy like yeah this looks nice what am i complaining about um wait so yeah i did not expect the silver four two i guess i expected knight three three um i know you typically don't do this so early but here it has to make some sense Yeah, no, that's a good point. Like, I've certainly done that sort of checkmate in a chess game. Um, it's not mate in a shogi game, but it's a strong attack. But yeah, here, like, say they've cut off my silver, so I can't go to either of these squares. I'm trying to figure out what to do next. I mean, nobody ever does this. But I've always been curious, like, what if this happens? Yeah, this, like, blocks their bishop, so they're just miserable for a while. And um, eventually I can find an attack somewhere. I know, I've done moves like this and gotten criticism from strong players saying, no, this is a slow move that, like, blocks all of your pieces and the knight's not going anywhere. Um... Here it makes a little bit of sense, because, like, this silver threat is so strong. But now we've made this permanent commitment to break up the castle and stick the knight here. Um, okay, so the fourth file pawn. Oh! So it's not just about the pawn. Like, we could 
Well, I'm sorry. That's the sixth. Depends how you're counting it. But since they've got this square covered twice, yeah, it's got to be... And we do have the number right above the fourth file. In the opening, they call this fourth file rook, even though it's on file six. Um, but normally it's white playing that. So, But yeah, here, the actual fourth file could play this and move this and like break this open. Yeah, so there are ways for me to play this, which is my main concern. But uh, probably gold 7-8 is useful to defend this thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Because if, so hypothetically, um, if I don't do that, this is eventually a threat. Maybe right now it's a threat. Oh, ah, I see. So I can't do this right now. Right now I would have to retreat, like I was considering doing during the game. But if we play this, this is the first time I've actually seen this kind of formation. But that makes sense. Yeah, everything's covered. That's brilliant. Wow, because they don't have a way to snipe this bishop. Okay. That's a really good resource to know if you're playing Central File Rook. You want to be able to like de deal with this knight and pawn trying to blitz uh, the side of the board. Um. Okay, yeah. Potentially I lose this pawn. Um. But it's not too bad. Oh! Okay, so yeah, I still have to contend with this. So the way I contend with it, um, it's like that. And although the pawn potentially might be lost, like, this rook is no good here, so it's all fine. Again, this is hypothetical. This might not happen right away. This might happen later in the game that the, this pawn drops, or it could happen right away, who knows, but um, here if this were to happen, like, their rook is trapped, which is good for me. Yeah, oh, gold 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay, I was looking at a knight drop, and I'm like, I don't want to commit my knight, but yeah, here we go. Um... Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not the gold move. Um, maybe we do have to drop the knight. Um, and either this happens or they take our bishop or something. Oh, rook takes gold. Followed by Pontix. Oh! Wait. No? Uh, what's the move order? No, that, uh, I'm afraid that doesn't work. Oh, in the case of Knight 8 8. Oh, I'm sorry, you're refuting my Knight 8 8 move. Okay. Okay, that's. Yeah, I was confused. I was causing confusion. So my idea... Um, they still get to take this pawn. So they get a gold and a bishop. Whereas in the other line, they just got one piece. Um, the bishop. Alright, so yeah, here we'd have to play it this way. Although... Um, yeah, actually we're fine. Our rook's not trapped yet. Um, yeah, I panicked because I don't like it when my rook is attacked. But so far, the rook's not dead. But yeah, you're right. That makes sense.
And then I guess maybe something like this to get the Rook uh, promoted. Assuming our opponent gives us time, which they won't. But, you know, in trying to bid for Rook activity, I mean, we could also just drop the other Rook and start taking stuff. Well, taking just the Lance, I guess. Um, but in a bid for activity, our opponent will probably give away the token if they have to. Okay, but this shows, like, yeah, this is one idea. Like, silver takes knights, not force this tempo. We could, like, do something else this instant. But in general, this rook is trapped. Or just poorly positioned. Um. Yeah, like, another idea is just drop the bishop back. Yeah, although this, a lot, oh. Just kidding. There's no threat here. I did that for illustrative purposes only. We know that, right? Um, yeah. Knight 7-7? Seven, seven? Really? Um, why knight 7-7? Seven, seven? Like, here, I just drop this back, and then next I take the knight and win the rook, right? Um, I mean, we could look at this. Oh, yeah, just exchange a knight for a knight. All right, that makes sense. Somehow I thought there was a tactical shot here, but I'm not seeing it. Um, so yeah, this is just one example of how this rook is misplaced. I don't actually need to retreat there. So this shows that sometimes this is playable. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm optimistic about tactics because I'm not so familiar with how to do combinations. Um, but yeah, that all makes sense. So, yeah, potentially um, I could raise this gold and then bring the bishop up if this knight hits. If the knight hits. If not, just leave the bishop back here. But otherwise, lifting this is an option. And this rook does not promote. That's uh, good to know. I'm sure my opponent knows this kind of knowledge, whereas I'm learning quite a few things. Um, so with that, let's see, can we get another opponent for this... Um, what's it called? Uh, the Supernova 7. Let's go. Might as well post these game URLs in my Discord every time I finish a game. Just for my record. Although, obviously, I have other ways to get at my own games. Um, Alright, let's watch a game. Here's a game. Between Heaven58 and Mashi. Alright, if the opponent... Um, Let's not go for the attack with knight 65. You just push the fourth foul pawn. Yeah. Yeah, with that knight blocking the bishop, they don't really have a good way to prevent the fourth foul pawn from advancing, and I could support that with other pieces. The rook is not the only piece that could support that. But it's good to see that there's at least one file on the board I could advance on without giving up material. Whereas normally I'll just play things and like, oops, well, I just gave up an exchange. Oops, I just gave up a piece. And I'll push these pawns anyway, because I'm not sure which one to push. Um, at least with the central file rook, it's pretty clear you want to push the center pawn. <laughs> um, with fourth file rook for a while, I was pushing the fourth file pawn. Um, or rather, the one that was in front of my rook. It says black sixth file is white fourth file. Um, and that led to very mixed results. And quite a few surprises for both myself and whoever my opponent for that game happens to be. Huh. 
times it? Okay, I see. So it's like 9 p.m. in Japan, I think. Somehow I I'd expected opponents to be chomping at the bit to get a game played. Um, generally, the file on which the rook stands indicates which pawn you want to push. <laughs> well, that's if you put the rook in the correct file in the first place, right? <laughs> but yes. Yes, if you have a coherent strategy, generally that's the one you want to push. If you don't have a coherent strategy, it can be a bit harder. Plus, it's a different matter if your rook's in front of the pawns and, or to the side of them or whatever. If you've played some opening where you, your rook's going on an adventure, that's a different matter. <laughs> but yeah, here... Here's a position where um, Sentes advanced the pawn in front of his rook, and Gotes advanced the pawn in front of his rook, or more likely has done it the other way around, pushing the pawn first and then putting the rook behind it. Yeah. Well, and the good news there with flexibility is that like memorization will not take you as far with um swing rook joseki as it will with um static rook i think Wojtek had a good point like in some of the sharpest static rook lines the theory keeps changing and so you're having to re-memorize things all the time and I guess some players find that exciting. Um, I don't. But quite a few uh, beginners will be like, they'll memorize as many things as they can. And it's just sad. And I've seen chess players do the same thing. Where they'll just buy all the opening books, memorize them cover to cover, and then when you get them in a real game, they won't know exactly what to do. I had one tournament game um, in high school where an opponent had played the Sicilian. And uh, he had studied this opening from a book called Beating the Sicilian 3. Um, it turns out I won that game because it's from the book Beating the Sicilian 3. And so, like, it shows, yeah, um, you can play the Sicilian, but White's got all these resources available to him. And so I just played this really sharp, aggressive game. And my opponent didn't really have a counter, because that's not what the book offered. Yeah. The third file for Fessent or File Rooks indicate where you put it in the beginning. Yeah, no, I've seen, like, even in some of my own games, there have been times where I put it on the fourth file and then it made sense to move it to the second file or vice versa. I've never successfully trans uh, transferred it from either the second or the fourth over to the third file. It's always been a disaster when I do that. Yeah, but yeah, in general, the rook can move around quite a bit. Pawn situation is pretty dynamic. Yeah, there's a book, Beating the Sicilian 3. I think it's from this Beating the Sicilian series. I forget who the author is, but if I remember right, it had this like bright cherry or pink color on the cover. I'd skimmed through it once. I'm like, well, this is pretty entertaining, but also not something I want to base my repertoire on. Yeah. Well, it's actually a pretty good book. Like, I've skimmed through it before. It shows, like, here's a lot of games between masters, or grandmasters, playing this opening. 
here's how it went, and draw your own conclusions from that. Um, so it's really more for entertainment than education, but uh, it's still a good book. I forget if the book actually contained, like, advice about some sort of system. Obviously, the Sicilian's an opening, but, like, there's all kinds of sub-variations and systems you could try to play. I forget if the book contained any, like, if this, then that, if this, then that, if this, then that sort of system that's just a recipe for a player to follow. I don't remember if the book actually had that. Or if it was just a collection of very high-level games with good commentary. Um, yeah. The C3 Sicilian complete. I mean, Sveshnikov's pretty great, right? Uh, <laughs> the title for the French translation is Winning Against the Sicilian Events. Yes. There should Somebody should publish a book... Or chess, just call it winning, duh, or something, duh, winning. How did Sheen put that? I forget. But yeah, um, you will see. Uh, I think I shared in Chogi Harbor's Discord some picture of some books I had acquired recently for chess study. Um, among them, like fundamental chess openings. And, um, I finally decided to get, uh, Dvretsky's Ending Game Manual. It's been about a decade since I last attempted it. It did not go well last time I attempted it. I'm not any better off right now, but still. Um. <laughs> Complete C3 Sicilian variation. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. I do wonder, though, like, I could probably publish a book and call it Refuting the Sicilian 101 and see how many people, like, buy it. Even better, like, with the advent of machine learning, I wouldn't even have to write the book. It could just be, like, here's a collection of games that were all automatically annotated. Not just with, um the punctuation for the moves for good and bad, but also just with random text interspersed to make it seem like maybe a person wrote this. Alright, so what I don't understand is how come this silver is not gone to 3-4 and 2-3 hitting the rook? There's some tactic wizardry afoot here, and I don't understand it. Okay, the rook backs up. I was not just imagining this. Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, I don't get it. Like, that was a free promotion to a gold with a nice attack to follow. I guess um, Senta must still have a very good attack to turn down an opportunity like that. Yeah, right? There was um, some group that uh, had used um, so AI to write a paper and then submitted it to a journal. And the journal accepted the paper. And, um, obviously, it hadn't been peer-reviewed because it was entirely generated by the AI and it upon very close inspection, it doesn't make sense at all. But it shows, like, um, 
either the strength of the AI or the weakness of a journal. So, or of the peer review process or whatever you want to make of that. It just highlights, here's the level of trust between um, people in academia. That they would trust you would not submit just gibberish to a paper and expect it to be published. Yeah. Or the editorial process. Yeah, it might not even be an academic thing. It could just be like some extra academia um, editorial process that's expected to have occurred. Alright, well, where's the bishop going? That is brutal. See, now this is stepped in the way of the rook, uh, of uh, Gota's rook. So now we get to promote with the dragon, and also um, our silver is probably going to be fine. Um, yeah, this is quite a beat down. Actually, our silver is defended. So, like, this is a stable and aggressive attack. <laughs> um, okay, that makes sense. It's a way to attempt to drive the dragon away. I think this attempt is successful, at least for now. The dragon's going to drop back to, like, 2-8 or 2-6. What's... why here? 2 6 would suggest that bishop 4 4 is not happening anytime soon. Um, <clears throat> if that's not happening anytime soon, then um, our silver is just going to stay on 3 5. But which of our pieces is going to attack next? Um, obviously, if we drop the pawn on 2 3, pawns get exchanged and our dragon goes up and down the board. And we lose a tempo each time we do that. Um, if we play our silver in 2-4, bishop 4-4 four, four happens, and we move our silver back. So, I'm confused. Something we have is going to start attacking. Oh, we're just going to build our castle a little bit stronger before we do something. Okay. It's another waiting move. Oh, alright, take care, Abigail. I forgot to mention the funniest... Oh, never mind. Let's get started. Good luck. I think this was the position where I could do this. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. So here I have the possibility of a bishop exchange. Um... I'm just curious how far I can push the boat out here. Um, I'm trying to get them to commit to one idea or another.
So if they impede their bishop, then I'm interested in pushing the center pawn. Um, if they push this pawn, I want to exchange bishops. Hmm. Yeah, I'm confused. This has turned into a massive game of chicken, where we each recognize that taking our opponent's bishop could lose a tempo in what could be a very sharp game. But I'm also trying to induce any kind of tempo losing move. Um, yeah, okay. So if the silver climbs, we have tactics. All right. Um...
Hmm. No, I don't want to commit that just yet. We're going to prevent any bishop shenanigans on the back rank. That was complicated. Um, so this pawn is harder to hit than the one that I had originally on 8-3 or 2-3. Um,
I mean, yes, I have an issue in that, like, I really want this pawn removed. But I don't have a way to remove it. Okay, they're trying to ensnare a future horse, if indeed I, my bishop does promote. They're already taking measures against it. Yeah, they keep hardening their castle against a bishop drop. But at some point, like, there's only so hard you can make a castle. At some point, that'll max out. So if I push, if they take, if I take, like, yeah, promoting a horse doesn't really get it anywhere. But I think this is the hardest possible castle against uh, a bishop drop, so there's nothing more they can do to harden it. And if I can get this pawn ever to move, um, then immediately I can promote. Windows telling me I'm short on storage space. I'm gonna have to finish highlighting videos sometime soon. Alright, this rook is taking a posture. Hmm. I would say defensive, but um I'm not so sure. Okay, well, we're going to follow through on my idea. This does prevent me from retreating my silver. Um, but I think that's okay.
You'll see just how terrible my idea was to break on the odd number files. I'm not sure this does anything, now that I think more about it. It threatens to threaten to do things, but goodness, this is not so effective. Because they just take, I take, and they drop again. Um, and I don't have an immediate bishop drop to counter that. This is what I expected, but, like, I was thinking pawn takes and I push my center pawn and things get messy. At least as far as I understand them, that looks messy. Um... But no, somehow I expected them to just move the knight, and now I take, and this silver moves, and then I push in the center. Like, this is kind of what I hoped for. I'm not sure why they didn't just take my pawn and allow what I thought was a complication, because this doesn't seem any simpler. Um... Again, this is my whole point, is that I want to remove this pawn so I can do this bishop drop effectively. And now that the silver's moved, it's possible to remove this pawn. I'm not sure if I just pulled some sleight of hand or what, but to me, like, it looks like we have this pawn 5-6 complication. Regardless of whether you take or you have me take on the seventh file, so my taking here didn't make this particular uh, pawn advance any easier for them to deal with. And now I promote. I'm confused. Okay. I promote. Where's the tactic? Is there some strong counter promotion thing that I missed? Okay. You're attacking my bishop. Do you want your rook there? Um, I mean, it'd be better if I had a rook than a bishop right now, right? Maybe I got greedy. Maybe my move here doesn't work for some reason. I mean, certainly I got greedy, but maybe my move doesn't work is the point. So, um, yeah, they offer this exchange. So now I want to get my rook active. I want all the chaos, because I know that like, if I play chaotic enough moves, there's no way that my opponent has read everything out. Um,
Hmm, where do I put this? Not the center of the board. <laughs> Not 5-5. Five five. Okay, we have a pawn drop for some reason. Are they seriously trying to, like, set up some tactic here? I don't understand. I mean, there's only one file I can put a pawn on right now. Um, and only one square looks reasonable. Do I promote this? And then if they take, I have a bishop drop and the entire castle collapses. But if they don't take, I get bishop drops anyway. Um, Sanjibio Somehow I just assumed I had a limitless supply of bishops um, when I was trying to read this out. I should count better next time. Sanjibio 
50秒1 2 3 4 530秒。40秒。Yeah, my silver is not doing anything where it's at anyhow, so let's make use of it. Let's try to get ourselves a rook. What I saw is that this knight is now in the way of the rook. So I'm trying to take advantage of the rook being confined. Okay, we're going to continue trying to win this rook. So we're offering two generals plus this promotion. Uh, and our opponent accepts. If I take the token, they just drop a piece on the head of my rook, which is not so pleasant. So I need to do something like this. Maybe they're going to drop a general here, in which case I take the token and just promote my rook. And I have two, I have a dragon plus a rook at that point. But the point is that I can't take the token because, um, or at least right now I can't because they just drop on the head of my rook. So yeah, they are doing the predictable thing, silver here. And I just take here and they take my horse and I promote. I mean, there are other ways to play this, I guess. Um, I really want to have a dragon. Like, a horse is worth nothing against this formation. Like, uh, it can't possibly break that up. Ah, this is clever. All right, that makes sense. Um, Okay, let's make an attempt to save the rook then.
pieces desire freedom, and freedom, generally speaking, is up the board. Otherwise, yeah, I would just attack this bishop, but I don't want the bishop. I want more. Trying to find, like, is my knight valuable, or how valuable is it? I'm not sure. I just walked into a silver fork, didn't I? What am I saying about the value of the relative value of pieces, I wonder? Oh dear. I mean, like, I could have seen them. Yeah, they just put a silver there instead. Then that makes a lot more sense. Um,. This was my idea, but I'm pretty sure Silver Fork would have put a monkey wrench in the whole thing. But now I actually get to play this idea. Um, Where does this rook go? This rook's going to be a coward. Uh, he's going to invite pieces to attack him, and then he's going to run away. I 
Oh, interestingly, well, no, I'm sorry, this gold protects the square. But if I could deflect the gold, then a pawn drop there could be useful. Yeah. It's a strong attack. The idea is they take my knight. Oh, what? Well, this is check. They take my knight, I take the silver, knight pawn drop, and then I rook takes up there. I'm not seeing how he mates me. I was trying to see if there was any variation where king uh, 9-2 makes more sense than 9-3. I didn't see any variation where it made more sense to play to 9-2. So if this tries to chase me, then I open the gate and run. Maybe I open up this way. Yep, yep, yep. So potentially there's going to be a rook at my front door. I'm not too concerned about a rook. I should be. Should be concerned about a rook. He needs a diagonal moving piece to checkmate me.
maybe silver there was required. I forgot knight takes as a possibility. Um, Get this fantastic Jenga tower of pieces surrounding my king. Sanjibio. Okay, so I kind of have to take that, no? Um, so I'm threatening Pawn takes Knight. Perhaps now I'm executing Pontex Knight. Does Pontex Pawn checkmate me? Yes. So I need this escape square. All right. So I can't just delay for a move. I do have to escape my king. Otherwise, pawn takes pawn and then gold, 9-5 mate. So, yeah, this is forced. Okay, I have no choice but to run, so we run. Running doesn't look so bad. All right, they're threatening some kind of gold drop on my head again. This knight in defense, like two games in a row, these defensive knights have been amazing. It's incredible, really, that the knight could hold so many squares. Um... It's 
hearts. Now my king runs. So if I go back this way, they have a gold drop here. If I go directly back, they don't have that drop, but then I can't go after this token. I understand that it's fun to attack and give check every move, but um, I'm not so sure that's the way to play this. So if he does a gold drop on my head, then I go back and then forward again. Try to seesaw my way out of this. Otherwise, gold drop on the head, and then this gold moves, and I'm getting, well, I'm almost certainly getting mated that way. Thirty-four. Okay, finally, we resolved this tension. I wondered when that was going to happen. Um, yeah, no, I'm in trouble. That's for sure. But am I made it? Not so sure. Checkmate's not quite so simple. I have no idea. I can't read this. I'm going to pretend I can. But yeah, if I try to defend this forever, I'm lost. So I have to try to attack. Oh, that's simple mate, isn't it? All right, well, that'll settle it. Um, yeah, well played. Wow, that was an exciting endgame. Uh, let's see what the remark is. <sighs> wow. <laughs> okay. I wonder. Okay. Yeah, have a nice day. Cool. Okay, wow. Well... We got one hell of an audience for that. We had uh, Panic and Jen and several other spectators. Because uh, that, that was super intense. And yeah, I flubbed the ending pretty terribly. In case it wasn't obvious, um, 
I can't read everything. Um, I have quite a bit yet to learn. Some of my moves there were probably spectacular, others were probably terrible. Um, I can't really say. Uh, I'd have to run this uh, through with an engine, at least the endgame part, to see like what happened. But yeah, this surprised me. So, the fact that he just let me promote like this. Um, this was hasty. I should have just promoted. Been done with it. I could always do the pawn drop next turn. Um, well, maybe I can't. Maybe I don't have a choice. But, like, yes, they can still oppose um, my stuff, and it'll take a long time for me to fight and break through again. But that's a fight worth having. The fight that we have actually in the game. Um, although it was exciting, perhaps was unwise. Um, yeah, I. from here I really didn't understand what was going on. Um... There's probably some tactical shots somewhere in here. Oh, yes, I could have considered this directly, although a rook is pretty useful. Um, I'm sure there was some tactical shot here somewhere. I was thinking about this. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, this endgame was crazy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and then they gave away the rook. I was surprised, and then I took this knight. Which was greedy. And after taking it, I regretted it. Um, but it was too late. I had already taken the knight. I'd misread something somewhere to try to justify my taking it, but... Um, Maybe it's still best, but yeah, some of these moves here were not so hot. Like this allows a fork, um, which I really don't have any counter to. So yeah, overall it was a pretty exciting game. Um, I'm sure people will have lots of comments about exactly what happened. Because uh, I was pretty confused throughout. Um, so I did consider this. Um, but here, maybe again, I should not be so greedy. Like, it's okay for me to give away the bishop. So they're not going to do this particular uh, gold drop. They might have some other tactic. There might be some other reason I can't do this, but gold drop here forking my pieces is not the reason. Um, do they have some other way to trap my rook? No? Not that I see. So there's this check. Well, and now they either... No, I'm sorry, they can't do this because of my rook. Um, yeah, this rook's actually excellent in defense here, as long as I don't stick it in front of my king. So, I mean, this is one possibility. Um, yeah, I don't really know how to oppose this attack. This bishop is just, like, permanently anchored on my side of the board. So at some point... I mean, maybe the repetition's fine. Maybe I need to do something like this. I don't know. It's hard for me. So I should just watch more high-level games and see if I can spot something this crazily insane. Um, but chances are study is merited more toward the beginning of the game than here. And yeah, from here, eventually I did get mated. Uh, continuation that I missed until the very end was this.
And yeah, I don't actually get to do this like I planned. Um, so, uh, overall, very interesting game. Uh, thanks for the game.